Bullshit. Pretend for a moment we've entered a parallel universe, free of bullshit and full of bold solutions. That's what the No BS Show is all about. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. Let's cut the bullshit. We're with Dan Corser, President and CEO of Predictive Synergistic Systems, and it's time for you to pick a tool or a tip you'd offer that will help our audience tell their story, craft their message, or communicate to internal and external target audiences. It could be something like using Google Trends to generate content ideas. It might be your favorite book, blog, or productivity resource. Or it could just be a tip on how to approach their career. Whatever you think might help our listeners. Um, I put a lot of thought into this and probably the most compelling book that I've read in the last 20 years is a book called Why We Buy by Paco Underhill. It was required reading for everybody in the or every management position in the organization. And it's it's a great book. Um, uh, It talks about the science of shopping and and we utilize that information in order to reset our stores to change the way the the landing uh space looked as you came into the organ came into the store we're also in michigan that we have vestibules so there is a transition zone there in in inclement weather uh, and uh but that book why we why we buy why we buy by paco underhill is a phenomenal read and i recommend it to anybody even if they aren't in retail We'll get it up on the show notes. We're moving on to our pop culture segments, Dan. You think you're ready? I don't know. Well, it's time to keep calm and hit the bullseye. I'll ask you to choose between two marketing or messaging classics. You tell me which one you like more, but you only have a few seconds to choose and hit hit the bullseye. Then we come back and let you give us your rationale for selecting. Are you ready? I'm ready. Geico's Gecko or the Aflac Duck? Aflac Duck. Reach out and touch someone, or can you hear me now? I like reach out and touch someone. Chipotle or Moe's? Chipotle. Just say no, or this is your brain on drugs? Just say no. Progressive's flow, or Jake from State Farm? Oh, I like them both. (laughs) Jake from State Farm. Cheers or friends? Cheers. You're not you when you're hungry, or nobody better lay a finger on my butterfinger. You're not you when you're hungry. In spades. Suzanne's here with us, and she brings me snicker bars because that pretty much lives up to me. So you and I might have a little bit of similarities on the PI. We have it on a drip. (laughs) (laughs) The Marlboro Man or the most interesting man in the world? The most interesting man in the world. This next one's a ringer. Ohio State or Michigan? Not even close. Not even close. Lloyd Carr was my neighbor. <laughs> See, sometimes I have to throw those in there. His, he has a, Lloyd, a signed Michigan helmet in his office by Lloyd, Cor- Lloyd and also um, Bo. Yep. Yep. So you're a big Michigan guy. Did your son play there? Or? No, he didn't. Okay. He didn't, but we're me. big fans. Yeah. Okay. Big fans. Great. All right, Dan. So that was hit the bullseye. Let's go back. Tell me what you, anything you'd like to say about any of these. Is it, uh, you chose the Aflac duck, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Why? Um, I think it, it comes down to speaking to the meat at the heart of the dog. Those things resonated with me. Um, where the others were familiar brands. This one really, um, I have more of a connection to it. I'm excited to tell you that it must be a Vistage connection. Dan and I are both Vistage members, but Three out of 15 people have uh, chose reach out and touch someone over Can You Hear Me Now? And they're all Vistage members. Lisa Allen, the CEO of Ziegenfelder Company, and Dave Nelson, a friend of both of us, and, and Dan Corser. So you chose reach out and touch someone. That's kind of like my management principle, okay? <laughs> it's more of, and, and it's kind of a joke, yeah. you know, but uh, I have a tendency to be a little bit my, more assertive. Um, people around me might think it's aggressive, but it's a little bit more assertive. And um, uh, although I'm on beta blockers, so it's, I'm much better now than I was eight years ago. I, you know, I've always thought you were just kind of laid back. Ha! Which one did you take, Chipotle or Moe's? I picked Chipotle. And, and what's your thoughts there? I, I frequent the establishment. Okay. Then you like my little why about, from Steve Ells about the sustainably raised foods, not an elitist pursuit. Yep. 
you went with brain on drugs, correct? Or just say no? I said just say no. Just say no. Okay. My bad. My bad. Didn't get my ID didn't show up there. I didn't get there show my detail. So why did you choose just say no over your brain on drugs? Um, because I, I was, I experienced that with, with, uh, um, uh, oh, it wasn't Hillary Clinton. Who was it? That, that, no, it was, it was, um, uh, Ronald Reagan's wife. It was Nancy Reagan. Yeah. And, and I really connected with Ronald Reagan and it was probably more, I was probably, I don't know, it just resonated with me. Any of these others you want to talk about? You liked both Progressive Flow and Jake from State Forum. Yeah. Let's of. talk about Michigan versus Ohio State. Let's do it. All right. What are your thoughts? I'm really excited about uh, the end of the month. They're coming to the big house. We should be five and one. If right. anybody watched that Michigan State game, and if you're a state fan, you claim that as a win. Um, uh, that's kind of a joke. But uh, I think we should be six and one. I think we're going to win out. And and uh, uh, I really like Jim Harbaugh. I'd hate to be a player for him, because I can tell you when they lost that um, state game and then they had a bye week. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, and I like Harbaugh because he was a Michigan man, and I was really excited about him coming back. Still blows my mind that we brought Rich Rod from West Virginia to ruin the program, but I think we're back on track with a real good Michigan man. For those who might not be aware of what happened, the game that Dan is uh, talking about, Michigan State and Michigan, Michigan uh, had run the clock down to where there was basically time for one play and they just had to punt the ball. A bad snap and their punter then tries to kick it from the side and kicks it up in the end, gets hit and batted, and he gets tapped by another guy. He grabs it, and Michigan State runs the whole way for the touchdown. One of the most amazing plays, one of the most exciting plays I've ever seen, Dan. It, I almost gave up on college sports after that. It was just an incredible loss. I've never feel, felt that way about a loss before. And, um, uh, you know, interesting going from hero to goat. In the first half, that punter set an NCAA record of an 80-yard net punt. And then after the last play of the game, he was getting death threats. And, you know, just know that you're in Pittsburgh, so Harbaugh's aren't very well liked. You, you do know that, right? I know you've only been here seven years. Okay. All right. I just, I guess you just can't take the Michigan out of the man. Well, the other, the brother's the one we don't like. He's the Ravens guy. You know, it's oh, Ravens. I don't like him either. I don't like him either. I don't like Ra him either. Hey, Ravens week impacts hey, he all didn't of play us. play at Michigan. Jim Harbaugh was quarterback in 84 through 86. It doesn't matter. Ravens week, it, it, it's all of us. It doesn't matter what you do in this city. <laughs> so, all right, great. Great hit the bullseye, Dan. And I, I do like uh, Jim Harbaugh, actually, just so you know. I am going to tell you, I do, I do like him. I always, You know, I even actually didn't mind him as a quarterback. So I I think I hope he has a run like Bo or Woody or I think it, I think we found our coach and hopefully he'll be with us forever. Great messaging guy, uh, the Dockers campaign that he and his wife did to make fun of himself because of uh, the, they said how his pants looked so bad when he was coaching for San Francisco and they did that made it like it was a public service announcement and she came on and said, "Do you suffer from?" Wearing the baggy pants or whatever they were, and his wife. It was, was actually shorts that he was wearing when he was at um, uh, Stanford, mm -hmm. and the athletic director said, "You don't look like a professional. You look more like an old athlete," and that's where he got into the uh, um, khakis. And we're going to put that up on the show notes. It's one of my favorite all-time campaigns. So we move on to the sights and sounds of marketing, and what that is is we start off by taking a song that I've applied the lyrics to management, leadership, marketing, or messaging. And then we take the year that that song was from, and we talk about other messaging hits or misses. So this episode, Sights and Sounds of Marketing, starts with Watching the Wheels by John Lennon from the year 1980. It goes like this. People say I'm crazy doing what I'm doing. Well, they give me all kinds of warnings to save me from ruin. When I say that I'm okay, well, they look at me kind of strange. Surely you're not happy now. You no longer play the game. And Dan, as you can see, I just read it because I can't sing at all. So uh, playing the game at work, Dan's been talking about this. Uh, you have to be in a situation that matches up your natural wants, needs, and behaviors. So when you have to play the game and you have to be there before your boss and stay a few minutes later and smile at people who drive you crazy and try to be who you think they want you to be. 
the song comes back with when I tell them that I'm doing fine watching shadows on the wall. Don't you miss the big time boy? You're no longer on the ball. The big time where you can have a vague title, go to lengthy meetings that achieve little and be CC'd on hundreds of CYA emails. It's not about your title or making sure you're covered. It's about what you do, how you do it and the results you achieve. Focusing on trivial things adversely impacts productivity and your well-being. Focusing on what makes you tick, what drives you is key. Uh, people asking questions lost in confusion. Well, I tell them there's no problem, only solutions. Instead of accepting things as they are or complaining about your situation, do an honest self-assessment. Maybe use a tool like PI. What really drives you? When were you in the zone and most productive? Build a plan to find a position that matches up. Well, they shake their heads and they look at me as if I've lost my mind. I tell them there's no hurry. I'm just sitting here doing time. Working at a position or in a culture that doesn't fit you is a waste of your time and talents. Using tools like Predictive Index and building that plan for a personal and professional growth will energize you, increase your productivity, and improve your health. I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. I really love to watch them roll. No longer riding on the merry-go-round. I just had to let it go. Dan, your thoughts on the theme of watching the wheels? Um, I think that theme uh, is is you know uh, self-defeating okay um the alignment right where you if you can get into a position that you don't have to behave any differently you don't have to get on that that uh, uh um hamster wheel and we're a firm believer in authenticity okay and a firm believer that you're absolutely perfect though dave you're perfect the way you are absolutely just want to make sure you're in a strategic role that you can deliver in so you don't have to behave differently that comes natural to you. And like I say, I think that that's the most miserable thing existence anybody can have is they get stuck in a position. Um, they're making really good money. They think they have no options. And that's just, oh, it just, it just tears at our heart. And that's why we do this. So what's the first step a listener can take that's maybe impacted by this? And they're saying, you know what? I do have this good job. I do have security, but I'm kind of punching in and punching out now, even though I'm in a management position, a director level position, whatever, what's a, what's a first step you'd recommend if that was say a relative, a relative? Yes. Uh, first thing, uh, well, uh, practical application. We give them the PI assessment. It takes about five minutes. We take a look at it. We take a look at their three different graphs because it gives us great data on number one, how they're wired and number two, how they're being pulled or stretched in the last 90 to 120 days in their existing role. And uh, could take we could do a quick fit gap analysis. Is this a good position or not? There's some things that you can move. There's other things that are just not sustainable. And people that are stuck in roles in areas that are just extreme, that's where um, uh, you start having uh, uh, you know physical problems. That stress of being in a role for eight or nine hours a day, five or six days a week, and not being to be able to authentic causes bad stuff to happen, high blood pressure, all that kind of stuff. And we just think that, that life's too short to be in a role that, that you're not a natural at. Dan, you said five minutes, and I have to tell you a story about yesterday. I happened to send a PI to someone yesterday for a position, wanted to look at them and see what their theirs came out as. And I sent her the PI, and I said, it will take five minutes. And then I said... I know you don't believe me, but just for giggles, go ahead, see how long it takes. Six minutes later, I get an email back from her. And she said, you were exactly right. It really did only take five minutes. So it takes only five minutes. It can be used for individual, personal, professional growth. It can be used for existing employees to match up and try to get a fit. Talk about how it can be used in recruitment. In recruitment? Well, there's two pieces of the instrument. The PI assessment that you're talking about, it's spooky, scary, accurate. It takes five minutes to complete. But you should never look at a individual, a psychometric assessment, unless you have a baseline to measure against, because then you're going to be judgmental. That's why Myers-Briggs doesn't work in a selection piece. Um, we have a, our secret sauce is really the modeling of a particular role and coming up with a job pattern, because then we can be objective. We're not judgmental. We measure with precision and accuracy within a fifth of a sigma. Is this a good fit or not? You know, so the two instruments working in harmony, the job modeling instrument, and then the, um, uh, the PI assessment, uh, and then we look for fits and gaps. 
You know, the genius of Arnold Daniels, who's our founder, is a picture tells a thousand words. We're data rich, not report rich. You're not going to get 34 pages of, of that you have to read through on an individual candidate. And it's just, it's a visual fit gap and it's, it's fit to a, um, a pictures tell a thousand words. And our, our results are displayed pictorially. And uh, I mean, you've experienced the ease of application. You look at it, you can instantly see performance issues are predictable. And if we can predict them, predict them we can prevent them. It'll always be the gap between the job um, uh, pattern and someone's natural DNA. And then you can carve pieces out of that and give it to someone else that's better wired for that. So they bring more of their natural self to work. And then it's like, you get a great fit that's like never having to go to work. How cool is that? It's amazing. And we're with Dan Corser, President and CEO of Predictive Synergistic Systems, and he's talking about the tool, Predictive Index. But we're also talking about other sights and sounds of 1980, and they include, pardon me, do you have any gray poupon? Post-it notes are introduced as a product. No, I am your father, says Darth Vader to Luke in The Empire Strikes Back. The Rubik's Cube confuses many, and more than 350 million have been sold worldwide. Who Shot JR becomes part of our lexicon. And my favorite one, we're going to go back to all these, Dan. My favorite one, Cinderella story out of nowhere. Former ground greenskeeper, now about to become the master's champion. It's in the hole. It's in the hole. Bill Murray and Caddyshack. So, Dan, let's go back and try not to slam me for the feeble imitations, but part of me, do you have any Grey Poupon? Your thoughts on that ad campaign from 1980? I love Grey Poupon. And what happened, if you go back 25 years, um, on the industrial food grid, <coughs> the commodity was yellow salad mustard, okay? And so it was a leap as we're expanding categories, it was a leap to go to more of an upscale type of product, had a different flavor, didn't package, different feel. And I thought their marketing was phenomenal and wanted me to buy a Rolls Royce. And if you don't know that commercial, it'll be on the show notes. Two Rolls Royce pull up next to each other, right? The window rolls down. And the guy leans out and says, pardon me, do you have any Grey Poupon? And the other guy says, yes, I do, and hands him the Grey Poupon mustard. Post-it notes are introduced as a product. Do you, uh, you want to tell the story about how it happened? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I wish I was in on it because they took a commodity, paper, okay, and they turned it to a huge margin. Have you bought post-it notes lately? Yeah, they're pretty expensive. They're pretty expensive, but they're convenient. I mean, how do you how do you even survive without post-it notes today? And what was really interesting to me is it was a commodity. It was paper. They came up with one big idea. I don't know exactly how it happened, but I take a look at the amount of money that they were making out of just paper. And by putting a little bit of glue on the back of it, a huge margin. I'll bet you there's 80% margin in that product. We'll put the uh, story from Wikipedia somewhere online. I don't have all the specifics on it, but I remember it was by accident. One of the employees had used it to uh, actually stick something somewhere and, uh, and then brought it back out, and it became the, the big thing that it is. So we'll have that on the show notes. Good. And then Darth Vader and Luke, Empire Strikes Back, 1980. Your thoughts? You a big Star Wars guy? I am. Now, I'm not a Big Bang type of theory uh, Star Wars guy, but I enjoyed the Star Wars uh, trilogy. Um, uh, and I think I w went to, I wasn't there at the opening day, but I, I think I've seen every one of the Star Wars. And my son was of an age that it, that I, it was a good bonding. I've got a really good emotional connection to it because I had a good bonding experience with my son. And that's because of storytelling. We, we do storytelling pretty much for a living here at Mass Solutions. And you want to talk about storytelling at its core, which uh, it walks through from each of those episodes. And it talks about, you know, you have the hero, you have the villain, you have a clear cut path of what the story is. And it's memorable and it makes an emotional impact. Speaking of memorable, Who Shot JR? Do you remember the Who Shot JR shirts and beer cans? Oh, yeah. I think, it, to my memory, it was the first cliffhanger I've ever seen, okay? Or, or, um, and, uh, I mean, it was, uh, there were all kinds of different theories and stuff like that. Um, but the big BS was the next season 
when his brother died and it was just a dream. What a letdown. I think that's when I quit walking da- watching Dallas. <laughs> How about my man Bill Murray in Caddyshack? That was a classic scene when he's acting like he's uh, the the golfer and smashing the plants or the flowers or whatever, and he's doing that voice. We've all done that. Come on. You know when you were a kid, you always did the announcing of you catching the touchdown pass or you making the game-winning basket. So here's a guy who's a greenskeeper appearing to be like in his 30s, and he's going, Cinderella story out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Kind of a Walter Mitty type of – I've been a big Bill Murray fan um, from Saturday Night Live. I mean, I think he was one of the original characters on Saturday Night Live, yes. and that was like way out there in the 70s. Well, I think it started in 74 or something like that. And that's when that was that's when I was wearing puka shells before I traded the puka shells in for a tie. Um, so I wasn't always a CEO. I'd like to see a picture of that. You were you were one of the original not ready for primetime players with Bill Murray and uh, I, I really group. enjoyed that. That was that was a cool thing to come out uh, as a teenager, sneak back into the house after you've been drinking, and sit down in front of the tube with the parents and watch it when you when you're half crocked and and not get caught. Okay, for you kids out there, he's just joking. <laughs> we got a clean, wholesome show here. <laughs> Despite well, can, the title, no can, bullshit. <laughs> you can edit that one out. <laughs> It's the No Bullshit Show. Dan, how can listeners contact you if they'd like to learn more about what you do or about how they can hook up with you to watch Saturday Night Live? All righty. Well, you can hit our website, Predictive Synergistic Systems. Um, uh, it has you know, our contact information, gives you a little bit about what we do. And uh, so that would probably be the easiest way to see us or to find us. Or you can swing up to 850 Rowan Road in Cranberry Township and stop in. We'd love to see you. Are you on Twitter, Dan? You personally? We are. You? Yes. Is it Dan Corser? At Dan, is, is it at the real Dan Corser? You know, <laughs> here's some BS for you, okay? Um, we have a really good social media presence. Oh, uh-huh. and I make sure of that, Uh huh. but I don't do that. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. So, Dan, thanks for being on the show. It was a blast. Thank you. And for our listeners, thanks for joining us for the No Bullshit Marketing Podcast. Visit BoldSolutionsNoBS.com for show notes plus additional marketing and messaging resources. Remember to sign up for Light Reading to receive valuable strategies every other week to improve your marketing and transform your message. It really is light, intended to be read in two minutes or less, and it just might trigger bright ideas for you. To sign up, visit MassSolutions.biz, B-I-Z. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea, and build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions.